It is not possible to become rich by saving your money, which is losing its value to inflation constantly. Instead, you need to find ways to invest and receive returns in excess of inflation to grow your wealth. Hi, my name is Neera and I'm a financial analyst. I talk about personal finance and investments and teach you how to make money and grow it exponentially. If you're interested in this topic, consider subscribing as this will help the channel grow and impact more people. In this video, I will go through different financial instruments and how you can invest in them to grow your wealth. I will also discuss the pros and cons of each to make it easier for you to decide which one fits you better. I will start with my personal favorite stocks. By investing in stocks of individual companies, you gain ownership relative to the number of shares you purchase. Therefore, as the share price of the company grows, your returns grow with it. I have a step-by-step -step guide to start investing. Check it out now. Here are some reasons to invest in stocks. Number one, they have low barriers to entry, so you can start with as low as a dollar. Some brokerages offer buying a fractional share. For example, if you want to own Amazon but don't want to pay $2,100 for it, you can invest as much as you're comfortable with. Number two, stocks have the potential of high returns. Historically, the return on equity investments has outpaced the return of any other financial assets. Number three, you could earn dividends depending on the company you invest in. I have talked about dividends and how they work in previous video. Number five, stocks are liquid. If you need money now, you can simply click sell and receive your money immediately or in a short order depending on the size of the transaction. Another slight advantage is that you can attend shareholder meetings and cast your vote although you might not have enough shares to influence the company directly. While I'm a big fan of stocks, they're not perfect. For starters, the stock market is very volatile and you might not make the returns you want or even lose your investments. Return are never guaranteed. Moreover, stocks could be very risky if not managed properly. Again, you could lose your money if you don't know what you're doing and make common mistakes. Also, it takes time to reap the rewards. Having your focus on the long term might pay off pretty good. I'm not talking about weeks or months, it takes several years and even decades to get there. So patience is key. Adding to that, there is short-term volatility. Even if a company is a good buy for the long term, you might lose money in the short term. Besides the company's fundamentals, there are other economic factors that affect the stock's price. Therefore, you need to invest only the money that you don't need in the next few years. Next financial instrument is ETF, Exchange Traded Fund. It is a basket of securities and is traded on a stock exchange. It has similar properties to stocks in terms of how it trades, but instead of investing in a single stock, by buying one share of an ETF, you're investing in several stocks that are part of the ETF. There are different types of ETFs to choose from, depending on your financial goals. They usually track a particular index or sector. They can be structured by theme or specific investment strategies. Fun fact, the first ETF, which was created in 1993, is Spider S&P 500 ETF. It's traded under the ticker SPY. It tracks the S&P 500 index and is the largest ETF in the world. Some benefits of ETFs include, number one, it is a great way to lower your risk and diversify into several companies in one purchase. Number two, they're great for beginners. If you don't understand individual stocks yet, but still want to put your money to work, ETFs are a great way to do it. Number three, they're easy to trade compared to other passive securities like mutual funds. You can buy and sell anytime during the trading hours, place market, limit, stop loss orders, similar to trading a stock. However, as any other financial instruments, they have some downside. Return is not guaranteed and you might lose money the same way as in stocks. Although they diversify your portfolio, they do not eliminate risk. Actively managed ETFs have fees that could add up over time. However, if you consider the time you spend on researching and trying to diversify yourself, the fee might be worth it. ETFs that follow a specific sector might limit diversification. For example, if you buy the BlackRock Future Tech ETF, ticker BTEK, your portfolio is exposed to the technology sector and when market conditions are not favorable to that sector, you will lose more than if you diversified your portfolio to other industries like energy or financials. Next financial instrument I wanted to discuss is index fund. This is a type of ETF that tracks a market index such as S&P 500, Dow Jones, 
and Russell 2000. It can track the market index in different ways. They can mirror the market index exactly or invest in a sample of the security. Some advantages include, number one, lower expenses compared to actively managed ETFs. However, you'll need to check the fees and expenses disclosure to make sure. Number two, lowers risk compared to stocks and other ETFs. Since you're diversified and the securities that are part of the index are not actively traded as often. This is good because it avoids reacting to short-term swings and focus on the long-term goals. Moreover, fewer trades are better for tax purposes. Short-term trades are taxed at a higher rate than long-term trades. And they give you broad market exposure. Through index funds, you can diversify your portfolio across all sectors and stocks. There are a few disadvantages to index funds. For one thing, they are not risk-free. They do significantly decrease risk, but it is not zero. No financial instrument will offer you that. They also lack flexibility. Since it mirrors the market index with preset rules, the fund doesn't react to price declines. In addition, they have limited upside. Since index funds offer low risk, they also offer low returns that are equal to the market returns. On average, it's anywhere from 8 to 10% annually. Finally, it may not perfectly track its index due to tracking error, which can happen for various reasons. For instance, if the index fund is only investing in a sample of the market index it follows, the return might be different. Next financial instrument is cryptocurrency. It is a decentralized digital asset that is based on blockchain technology. Since the creation of the first cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, in 2009, thousands of others have been created and traded actively. Besides Bitcoin, Ethereum is another popular cryptocurrency that offers smart contract functionality. The main idea behind cryptocurrency is to exchange payments without involving financial institutions. Here are a few advantages. Because cryptocurrency eliminates the use of banks in a transaction, transferring money is quicker. Just for comparison, domestic wire transfers take one to two business days. International transfers can take up to a week. Buying and selling stocks take two days to settle. So in comparison, cryptocurrency offers a quicker way to transfer money. Cryptocurrency diversifies your portfolio. It is very volatile but offers high return. Therefore, if you add cryptocurrency as a small part of your portfolio, it will expose you to big returns. I would say 5% of your portfolio is very generous to allocate to cryptocurrency. I personally keep my portfolio at 2 to 3% allocated to crypto. Some downside to cryptocurrency. It is a new market with very little regulation and track record. In addition, the brokerages that make transactions happen are often hacked. It is a highly speculative and very volatile market, which involves a lot of risk. Trading crypto involves high trading fees, ranging from 1 to 4% of the total trade amount. Because there is a lack of inherent value, cryptocurrency are hard to price. In case of stocks, for example, I can go through their financial reports and have an idea of the approximate value of the company. In case of cryptocurrency, it is impossible to do. It may someday prove to be something much more valuable than it is today. It is just hard to properly define its value right now. Saving the dessert for the last, number five is real estate. There are several ways you can invest in real estate depending on how much you want to be involved in the day-to-day -day operation and your short-term financial goals. You can purchase a rental property. You'll be highly involved in the day-to-day -day managing everything from finding the deal to looking for tenants. You could also hire a property management firm to take over the day-to-day -day once you bought the property. However, you still need to manage the manager, so to speak, and make sure everything goes smoothly. This strategy gives you you stable cash flows monthly and you earn on the appreciation of the value of your property. Another way is flipping houses where you buy a property, renovate it, and sell it, and repeat the whole process again. You earn by pocketing the difference between the price you sold it for and the price you bought it for, including the renovation costs. If done effectively, this strategy gives you a quick profit. If you don't like to manage real estate, but still want to invest in the industry, then rate is an option for you. Rate is a real estate 
Estate Investment Trust that owns, manages, and finances real estate and is trading on a security exchange. Rates also offer more liquidity compared to physical real estate investment and is traded similar to stocks. Here are some advantages. Real estate is nice hedge against inflation. The value for property rises with inflation and you keep the buying power of your money by investing in real estate. Through investing in real estate, you can diversify your portfolio and lower your overall risk. Since real estate is a relatively safer investment, you can protect your assets from downside risk. Another advantage is that real estate offers stable cash flows from rental properties or dividends from rates. However, real estate offers little capital appreciation. Often returns are a long inflation. Real estate usually takes years to generate growth as compared to stocks. It also has high barriers to entry. To invest, you will need cash for down payment ranging from 3 to 20% of the property amount, good credit score to qualify for good interest rate, and sufficient income to get the mortgage approved. Real estate investment is also illiquid. It can take months to sell a property and you incur listing and marketing fees. As an alternative, you can consider rates which provide liquidity like the stock market. However, with rates, it is that you have less control over the operations of the properties. They act like stocks in this regard. You purchase shares and therefore earn relative amount of the company, but you have no control over the decisions that are made at the management level. These were the five financial assets I wanted to share with you today. Let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite. In the next video, I will talk about how I saved $5,000 buying a car in 2022. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified once I post the video. As always, thanks for watching.